Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and it's time for another one of those garden tours brought to you by my sponsors, Bessie Seeds and Safer's Gardening Products, but more on that later. Uh, it's uh, middle, middle of October, late October actually, it's October 24th, I'm about a week late filming this. Um, and uh, it's, uh, we st I do not think we've had frost yet. This is the, the latest I've ever seen it. Usually we get a frost in late September. This is just unbelievable. I still have tomatoes and stuff in the garden. Um, so it's a very bizarre year, uh, unseasonably uh, warm. Today, you can kind of feel the cold in the air. Feels like fall today. Um, but, um, and there's some signs of fall. You can sort of see the, the leaves on the trees behind me are starting to change color and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, let's go have a look at the garden and let's, uh, let's see what's going on. All right, here we are at the entrance. I'm starting to hoard uh, some leaves. I got to put these on the garden today. Uh, basically, all the squash here, everything up here is done. Uh, the uh, uh, leeks are doing uh, quite good. Starting to harvest those and use them in soups and stuff. Uh, parsnips here are going to be, uh, basically they need a frost to start tasting good. So we're getting to that. Lots of Swiss chard still going on there. I've been thinking of do, doing a video on how to harvest Swiss chard. If anyone's interested in that, let me um, let me know. I, I basically use the same approach as I do with my kale, the cut and come again approach. Uh, these beans are all done. Uh, I got the usual sort of perennial things over here. Uh, this garden, which was potatoes, I believe, I think, I planted garlic here. I think. <laughs> so I gotta put a mulch on that. Yeah, that's definitely garlic. Yeah, that's definitely garlic. So the garlic were all planted there. I've got almost all my garlic planted. I got one more, probably about uh, 40 garlic left to go somewhere. I gotta get those in the ground today. Uh, I got carrots over here. I like to leave them in nice and late as long as I leave the carrots in until the ground's at risk of freezing. Uh, kale, nice, nice and big and beautiful. I had to remove almost all of these because they were attacked by some, some damn thing. Uh, these beautiful uh, Siberian kale, but uh, anyway, they taste really good now. All the kale, just fundamentally different flavor this time of year. Even though we're not getting frost, it's getting cool. And I just noticed that the stems are, are more um, tender now. And the flavor is better. Just so much better to have kale this time of year. <laughs> um, you know, I've had these, I've been, we've been eating this kale since like June, but they're starting to taste good now. Uh, the eggplant are done. These uh, tomatoes are all basically done. So cut my, I send my kids out every couple of days to pick tomatoes, and uh, they know I was they're not the most diligent, um, but they're you know they're kids. Uh, these ones here that were sort of delayed, I'm getting some nice, uh, <laughs> some nice fat ones. These little cherry tomatoes. The black mark on there indicates we probably got some frost last night because I'm noticing some of the foliage is damaged. So. Pretty, pretty much done for tomatoes, but we still got a couple cherries there. Um, I mean, this is a bizarre. These are a late, very late planting of uh, of green beans, and we still have still getting green beans into this time of year. Um, but even these, they look. It must have got frost here last night or the night before. Uh, it must have been last night. Last the night before was not cold. It was very warm on uh, on Saturday. Uh, this looks suspicious. No, no, this, this was, um, okay, it was uh, uh, cilantro. So I, cu I, cu I cut these off. <laughs> uh, a couple weeks ago, I thought um, we were going to get frost, and I harvested all the cilantro here. And, and all I did was just throw it in a food processor with a little bit of salt and a little bit of lime, and uh, put it in a little uh, mason jar and stuck it in the fridge. And, I'll keep for a couple of weeks, basically use it that way, right? Just like a cilantro paste. Uh, more carrots over here. Uh, lots of parsley. When parsley's pretty tough and can handle some frost, so uh, we're just eating this as we need it. Um, I've, I've saved some of it in the same way I did the cilantro. I'm just making like a paste. But um, anyway, there's still lots growing in the garden. Uh, and even these ones here, I cut these right down to the ground a few weeks ago. And they've grown back, <laughs> right? So uh, this was uh, this was my cucumber garden, right? This, that's why the stakes are still there, these big posts, right? But the cucumbers have been done for quite a while. Um, but yeah, lots of pars uh, parsley, and the, the dill's basically gone to seed. Uh, beets here. I know the last garden tour I said I needed to harvest these. Now I really need to harvest them to really get these out of the ground today. Um, so beets are ready to harvest. 
Uh, these parsnips can go another couple weeks. Full bed of parsnips here. Uh, there's still, there are some grapes out here. I lost most of them. Whatever was coming around, attacking these, eating everything, has just disappeared. Uh, so I'm not sure what happened here. But whatever was wrecking my garden, I think it was a bear or a porcupine or whatever the heck it was, it has backed off. So uh, I got some grapes here and they're basically ready to harvest. I probably got enough for a, a batch of grape jelly actually. I should get these picked today. Lots to do today, obviously. Um, center of the garden here. Uh, the, uh, this is all uh, garlic planted here. And my uh, first season of uh, strawberries looking good. Uh, they're going to need some mulch soon, uh, so we'll get around to that. Uh, zucchini. I mean, these plants are, are done. They look, they look horrible, right? But they're still producing. I still have more zucchini than I know what to do with. I just shot a video, what to do with all that zucchini, I think was the title. Uh, so uh, look at zucchini to deal with, right? Look at them down there. <laughs> a lot of zucchini. There's a couple over there I forgot to take in. Uh, anyway, I got, so I got zucchini. Uh, I got these uh, squash here, butternut and stuff. Those have to come in. Basically, we're at risk of frost now, so I got to sort of get a lot of things out of here. So uh, my kids aren't going to be happy. They're going to be helping me with this. Anyway, that's all of that. I uh, harvested all the potatoes out of here. All my potatoes are harvested. Uh, these sunchokes are ready for harvest over here. Uh, pe people were asking me, when do you know they're ready for harvest? Oh, when they start looking like crap. Right? When they start losing their color, when they start, their leaves start changing color. And with, so of course, when you see frost in the ground. So I, I just let them die a bit and I wait for a couple really good frosts before I harvest sunchokes. It's just about time to start doing that. It's They're, they're wonderful uh, roasted, really good roasted. Um, and we're gonna have a lot this year. I can just tell because these are the biggest sunchokes I've ever had <laughs> So I'm pretty sure I got some big roots under there. Some of them those plants are like an inch and a half at the base We got some nice sunchokes uh, All these beets weedy the weedy beets are still going strong need to be harvested uh, The uh, lingonberries had another season uh, they, they haven't really filled out, but I can see a lot of you know So this patch here didn't exist last year this either this plant or this plant has basically uh, colonized the area. So this, this new growth here is lingonberry. So, you know, over time, this patch will fill out and I'll get a pretty good good amount of them. But uh, I think it's going to take a couple years for this to be, you know, I was, I was ambitious thinking I'd, I'd, be, I'd be deep into lingonberries in a couple of years, probably take three or four. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, they're still going. They're all still alive and they're all still growing. And they're spreading out. That's what you want to see. Kale patch number two is doing great. Uh, all this uh, parsnips. You know, when they start looking like this, black, don't sweat it. That's just frost or cold weather or whatever. The, the plant is still alive and the, I mean, that's a good sign. Once you start seeing black on them like that, usually it means, you know, you can start harvesting them. That sort of thing, right? Egyptian walking onions. I didn't do anything with these. I, had, I was going to give away some of this, some of that. I had all these plans and I just, just let the whole thing just go wild, which is what I've got here. It's completely wild, out of control. That's fine, I like the scallions. <laughs> I like just the greens for omelet or whatever. They go in anything. So uh, yeah, what a late fall uh, sort of gift to have uh, this much happening here <laughs> in this patch. There's some weeds here, of course, but uh, it's nice. Uh, all the onions that were here were gone. They're all picked. Uh, the broccoli, I've sort of given up on it for this year. It's just gone to seed. I got to get these out of here. I was thinking of planting some garlic here, maybe. Um, I still have this nice collard green. I'd love to know what... I mean, my, my guess is that's a flash collard. That's what kind of grew last year. But man, these came in nice. Uh, all these sweet mama squash. <laughs> no, they're ready to harvest. I mean, really, people you might ask, like, when should I harvest squash? Well, when the plant looks like it's dead. <laughs> I mean, the plant's done doing what the plant does, right? So now it's time to harvest the squash before the frost gets them, because they can't, they can't take much of that. Uh, all these little sort of last minute beans I planted. We got beans, you know? These were all planted like, I don't know, first week of August or something. Uh, and yeah, the only reason this has worked is because we've had the weirdest fall ever, very warm fall, uh, unseasonably warm. 
Uh, I got some nice uh, cabbage here. Needs to be picked. Uh, pumpkin I grew in the experimental garden out back. I got one nice one over there and another nice one here. Basically came through the fence and formed up there. Now uh, that pumpkin's about a foot long and about uh, nine inches. That's not bad considering they're planted in this soil. And uh, this soil was basically that stuff a year ago. And it's only ever been, it's, it's never been uh, amended. I just put seaweed and hay and stuff down like that. So, um, yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. You know, it's not a not a trophy winning squash, but, uh, you know, stick a couple of seeds in the ground, see what happens. Not worth, not bad. Uh, this bed had um, uh, butternut squash in it. I've picked them all. And this bed had, uh, this bed was a bit of a disaster. It had uh, these uh, wild mustard greens growing. All this stuff growing here is mustard green. And even in this bed over here, which was tomatoes, it's been inundated and taken over with the mustard green, which, which are a good eating green. I like them. Um, but, and, and clearly, they don't mind the cold. Uh, so I don't think people in the family are as crazy about them as me. And they're a bit more tedious to to uh, prepare for food because you I think I've shown this in videos you, you don't want the stems the stems are very thorny you, you sort of want that part and you have to cook them all right uh, but they're good eating they're very mustardy they like kale right but a little bit more zippy anyway they're just wild anyway that's where we are here uh, you know, middle to late October 2021, uh, lots to do in the garden. This is a busy time of the year for me, actually, more busy than in the summer. There's a lot to do out here. Yeah, getting things, uh, getting garlic planted, harvesting things before the frost gets them, uh, getting things ready for next year, all that sort of maintenance stuff. You got, there's a lot to do before things start to freeze and the soil becomes unworkable. So this is almost the busiest time of year for, uh, if you have a large garden like this, in this climate, it's a very busy time of year, but uh, also you get to enjoy the, the fruits of your labor, right? So, uh, anyway, just a quick walk around the garden, showing a little bit of everything. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. Hey folks, if you want to help support my podcast and my YouTube channel, check out my sponsors, Vessi Seeds and Safer's Gardening Products. Uh, for Vessi's, go to their website, Vessi's.com, use my coupon code GAVS21, and you'll get free shipping as long as there's a pack of seeds in your order and you don't have an oversized item uh, in your order. Just check out the description, the, de the details are in the description box of this video. Uh, if you want to buy stuff from uh, Safer's Gardening Products, you can buy all the things I use from Vessi Seeds and you'll get free shipping that way. They, they, they sell BTK, uh, Slug and Snail Killer, and the end all that I use. Just check out the tools and accessories uh, link on their website. Uh, but you can also, if you're in Canada, you, you can buy uh, Safer's Gardening Products from woodstreambrands.ca. Um, if you have an order over $69, you'll get free shipping on that. They got a wide range of products goes well beyond the three things i use i just i only buy things for the problems i have right so i don't but they've got all kinds of pro, uh, you know products for beetles and things like that if you're in the u.s go to saferbrand.com and buy your stuff there that's the u.s the u.s buy from that uh, website order online they offer free shipping on all orders over 45 dollars i assume that's 45 dollars u.s so yeah if you want to help support the channel and the podcast, and they sell something you need, buy it from them. That'll help support everything I'm doing here. Thanks a lot.